dinosaurs. The Ordovician is a mind-boggling 450 million years ago, so far back that plants have yet to evolve. It's a world ruled by creepy crawlies and fantastically unsuited to humankind. The atmosphere at this time, it's atrocious. Much less oxygen and much more carbon dioxide than I'm used to. Without this special air mix, I'd really feel sick and get bad headaches. Just look around and you can see why the atmosphere is so different. There's no life at all on the land. There's no insects in the air. There's not even worms in the ground. And most crucially of all, there's no plants. There's not a speck of green. So the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it's not being absorbed by them, and they're not boosting the atmosphere with oxygen. But it's a different story out there in the sea. There's been life there for hundreds of millions of years. And you can take it from me, evolution has produced some real monsters. Now it was time to find one. First, some bait. In the Ordovician, that's the easy bit. With no land animals to scavenge along the beach, anything the sea spits up just lies here rotting. An armor-plated fish. Now, into shallow water to flush out one unpleasant little critter that I was going to be seeing a lot of. sea scorpion, one of the most grotesque of predators. And look, look at that, look at the tail curling. That's how they get their name, but there's no venom in there, like their namesakes on the land. And you've got to be careful, are those formidable pincers at the front? Oh. The scorpion gave me a graphic demonstration of just how formidable its claws are. It literally shredded the bait at my feet before moving on to bigger prey. Ah! You all right, Nigel? Slash my leg. It's another scar for the collection. <laughs> As I found out, those sea scorpions are pretty fearsome. But there's much bigger sea monsters out there. The sea scorpions, they're not the top predators. But to see the real big ones, I need a little more than a fish on a stick. I'm going to try with this. It looks a bit like a giant woodlouse, but of course, it's a trilobite. There's no relatives of this alive in the 21st century. There's up to 15,000 species. They range in size from a really tiny one, a millimetre in length, to this big one. This is about as big as they get. And I need one like this because I'm going to use this like a fisherman with a fly. And I'm going to try to attract a much bigger catch. And all I need to do is to insert this camera into the carcass. And if you're squeamish, Look away now, because what I've got to do is pop out the eye of this trilobite. There we go. Oh. There's so many surprises here. The sun's setting, the evening's come, and it's been so quick the day's flown by. That's because I forgot, in Ordovician times, the Earth's spinning much faster 
and that means that it's a 21 hour day, not 24 hours. So a watch like this, it's useless here. And look at that. It's gonna be dark very soon and we can't do anything more today. Anything you do, you try to do it, you know, you try to... Today, I'm hoping to dive with a sea monster. There's a special air mix in here. If I breathe this Ornavician air at pressure under the water, I'd become unconscious. So this is crucial for me. I also need this. This is a bit before it's time. It's a bite-proof shark suit. And of course, sharks haven't evolved yet. But I'm hoping this will give me protection from those vicious sea scorpions. I knew the bigger predators would be out in deeper water, so I ventured out into the middle of the bay. This will look very appetising, but for the predators around here, this should be a tasty snack. And I'm hoping that that camera is going to catch the moment when a monstrous predator tries to snaffle this up. like trailer bites. Come on, let go. <sighs> it was late afternoon before I got a decent bite. Something, something interesting there, and it is much bigger than a sea scorpion. <laughs> I've taken the camera. That's the end of the trailer bike cam. I have got to see what that is. I don't know what's happened here, but if I follow the line, I should be able to find the predator. The camera's not at the end, which probably means that the predator isn't far away. This is intriguing. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why they're all gathering, but first there was one sea scorpion, then there was another, then another, then another. And now they are all around me. There's a whole carpet of them moving along the sea floor. They're whizzing past my head. They're all heading in one direction. And there it is. It's an author cone. Biggest predator that the world has seen up until this time. He sensed me here. Get my heart hammering. I don't want to be grabbed by those tentacles, but those simple eyes, they should shun the light. So all I can do is start flashing my light, and maybe that will discourage him. Now he's gone, I can't 
see where he is. There's still the sea scorpions there. There! There's the orca coat. And it spotted one of the sea scorpions. They're dragged back to the mouth. There's a horny beak. Oh, you can hear it. I can actually hear it under the water. Hear the crunching sounds as the sea scorpions are crushed by the beak. These orthocones probably spend a lot of time in deep water. Light doesn't penetrate too well down there, so the eyes don't work very well, and they rely on another sense. They will actually smell out their prey and then crush them to bits. The orthocone, that really is the top predator of Ordovician times. It's not swimming very fast. If I can catch up. There. Ah, oh, yes. Right up to the tip of the shell. It's a wonderful texture. And I am hitching a ride on the back of an orthocone. As it got gloomier, I realised the orthocone was dragging me deeper. Time to get off. Thanks, orthocone. Thanks for the ride. God. Get off. This is what they were doing. I saw them moving in the shallows, moving towards the shore, and this is a mass spawning. It's a full moon at the moment. This is the highest tide, and they're laying their eggs in the sand. The eggs will be protected. Then when the next high tide comes in about a month or so, the young larvae will hatch and be taken back out to sea. And some of these sea scorpions, they're gonna stay around here until the eggs hatch. Fossils have been found with baby sea scorpions inside the stomachs of the big ones and that's what they do they wait around here and feed on the babies as they hatch on the next high tide Ordovician, then, isn't exactly a picnic. Anywhere the air gives you a headache and you can't go swimming without a chainmail suit probably isn't going to take off as a holiday destination. But prehistory has worse still to offer. The next deadly sea is 